Hey, Jamie, Steve, what's going on this Monday? Hey, Scott, Steve, what's happening over there? Uh, it's another Sunday. I'm sorry, not, <laughs> I wish it was Sunday. Another Monday in summer is what I meant to say. Thank you. It kind of feels like summer. I mean, officially summer's not over yet, correct? That's what I meant to say. We got uh, the 21st. The fall is here. And it's kind of hot in San Diego. Right. So it feels like summer to me still. Getting that last push with the... But hey, but you have AC now, so you're not sweating it. It's so lovely. I bet. Okay, well, welcome, everybody. Today is September 16th. Wow. September's already halfway in the books. Got the time change coming up now, so it'll get nice and dark at 5.30. I'm sure everybody loves that. Anyway, welcome to another edition of Office Hours. I'm your host, Jamie Hudge. Got my trusty wingman, Steve Gomez, in here. Hope everybody had a nice, profitable day. However, kind of a strange Monday. You know, just uh, not just last week, Thursday, Andy and I were talking about, hey, pushing up to all-time highs again. We'll see what the new week brings, and boy... Did we get some stuff going on over the weekend? And of course, we'll talk about that as we get into it later. First, let's make the attorneys happy and just go over the disclaimer here real quick. I just want to make sure everyone in attendance is aware of the fact that we bring all this information to you guys for educational purposes only. Uh, if you do need investment advice, please seek out a registered investment advisor or some other licensed individual like a Series 7 stockbroker. They can legally dispense, buy and sell information, investment advice to you. Um, so everything we share with you guys is for educational purposes only, not only in this webinar, but any of the nine webinars we have coming at you every week. Okay, and for the new people who might be in here for the first time, just kind of like to take a little bit at the top of the uh, presentation here to let everybody know about the community that we've built around the technology that is Trade Ideas. And of course, it all kind of starts up here with our free trading room. Yes, that's right. It's free. Uh, hosted by Mr. Barry Anderson. A big hit. Uh, usually could be four or five, sometimes even 600 people in the trading room, all sharing ideas. Uh, but more importantly, Barry does a fantastic job at moderating a crowd of that size, keeping everybody in line. Uh, well, at the same time, showcasing his trading style and the way that he uses the trade ideas technology. Now, of course, you get myself and Steve today on Monday uh, with the 5 p.m. Eastern office hours. Steve's going to take that steering wheel tomorrow for the trade of the week, 5 p.m. Eastern. Andy Linloff's going to ride shotgun with him. Hump day, Wednesday rolls around. We change it up a little bit, bring in the CEO and founder, Dan Merkin, along with our chief technical officer, Brad Williams. Always entertaining with those two. Andy's going to round out the 5 p.m. Easterns uh, on Thursday with the trading studio, and I ride shotgun with him. And then our ever-popular Friday support session every Friday starting at 11 a.m. Eastern. And nothing is off the table. Anything is fair game in the Friday support session, whether it's simple configuration, backtesting, automated trading, come one, come all, nothing's off the table there. Um, so don't forget about the Friday support session as well. In addition to the 5 p.m. Eastern webinars Monday through Thursday, we have TI University. These guys kick off Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Uh, everything from beginning 101 on Mondays, 201 Tuesdays, intermediate Wednesdays, and advanced 401 Thursdays. Now, the content stays static in all of these. It's the same every time. We do encourage you to try to attend the live versions. That way you can get your questions answered by the instructor uh, that is teaching each segment. But some of you might have jobs and other pesky things that get in the way of attending a live class. So if that's the case, if you're not, you can always watch these pre-recorded versions on our YouTube channel. And since, you know, once again, the content remains static, you can go over it as many times as you'd like. And if you do have any questions after you watch the pre-recorded versions, you can use the good old info at trade-ideas.com if you have any questions about what you saw there, and we'll be happy to get back to you. So once again, attend these live if you can. If you can't, we've got them all recorded on our YouTube channel. New accounts on the rise since we uh, first unleashed the initial AI, Holly 1.0. Uh, in the interim, we have launched two additional modules, Holly 2.0 and Holly Neo. Uh, so bottom line is people are responding. Since we launched the AI, uh, our user base has been increasing substantially, and uh, we expect this to follow suit into 2019 as well. But uh, obviously, people are digging it and making good use out of it. 
In addition to that, Brokerage Plus was launched not too long ago as well. It's a nice companion to automated, automated trading. It allows you to automate the AI if that's what you would like to do, uh, but it's much more than that. It is a completely uh, unique interface, a little bit more intuitive than the old uh, workstation over there at IB. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Uh, we just feel that what we've devised that allows you to execute either manual trades, automate Holly AI trades, or take your own strategies that you fabricated with our back tester and uh, put them through automation entries and exits or either one or not the other. Uh, so it's very malleable. So you can do your point and click, one uh, one click trading from any trade ideas window. You can automate or you can automate AI uh, as well. And you know the numbers tell the tale here. Live executions have just been increasing month over month since we launched it. Uh, as you can see in blue here, demo orders are in orange. So we got a lot of orders pumping through Brokerage Plus currently, and that number just keeps going up every month. What does that tell us? That tells us that people like it. People are using it for obvious reasons. Um, we'll take a little peek at Brokerage Plus and the new paper trading module towards the end of the webinar as well, uh, because that is uh, currently in beta and we're flushing out the rest of the bugs, but hopefully, keep our fingers crossed, hopefully within a week or two, it'll be released uh, uh, in the production version as well. All right, well, Steve, here we are at the top here. So uh, how about I kick it over to you? We can talk about the major tracking, ETFs, whatnot, and then we'll launch into the remainder of the program. Mm -hmm. Sure, kick away. All right, here it comes. You missed it. All right, hey everybody, welcome to my desktop. I'm going to start a little different this week. It's a weekly chart. For those who haven't looked ah. spy weekly for a while, there's some interesting things going on here. Number one is a very defined trend. Um, number two, mental note, the 200 week moving average was extremely significant in this brief period of volatility that we had. So kind of mental note in the future, I'm not predicting anything, I'm just saying in the past, that's where the buyers showed up. Um, let's move forward a little bit. And the thing that, you know, I start to ask myself as we look at the bigger picture here is, um, yeah, I think we all agree we're testing this uh, all time high level. Um, and uh, it's yet to be determined which direction is going to win. But I can tell you from past experience, if we fail up here and we don't go through and the sellers show up, then we start to think, well, man, hindsight is, was, was this, was this a giant double top, the dreaded double top we've heard about that we're, we're staring right at the face? You know, again, let's back, it's, it's been an amazing run since the uh, QE Fed started their magic back in 2008, 2009. It's been an incredible run. We are poised to possibly move higher. We are also poised to possibly, again, look back in the sand and say, wow, that was a double top. Wish I had seen that. Um, but I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not predicting. I, this is the price action in the bigger time frame. And coming into two to this is really nothing not bullish about this. This is a cup within a handle, within a handle. Are we going to do the same kind of thing and, and keep moving higher? That's, that's the possibility that the, the bulls are looking for at this level. Uh, so let's drill down. Actually, before we do that, let's just put in perspective. So double top land possibly in the SPY or possible new all-time highs. Uh, digging in. We'll see in the NASDAQ over on the queues. Hmm, interesting. A um, bit of a sell-off. Wick got ahead of itself a little bit there on the, on the weekly chart and not quite at double top land. If anything, well, it could be the kind of inverted head and shoulders we don't hope to see, but then on the bull, bullish side, we've got this nice little rising trend here. We've got the same thing that we saw in the S&P. We've got rising bottoms on the rising weekly can. <laughs> excuse me, on the rising weekly candles there. So, I mean, the stage may be set for yet another high, uh, pushing through all time highs, but just noticing over in the NASDAQ land there, in hindsight, it could be a possible um, head and shoulders, especially with that little wick right there. So this is gonna be an interesting week. So now we can go into the, oops, we can go into the daily. We'll go to time frame daily. And this is what we've got. I think last time we spoke, we were you know, around this level right here. And um, uh, we discussed the possibility of not a big deal if we were to um, come back and, and do a little consolidation and try and move higher. Well, in reality, it's kind of what we got. 
a little bit of a consolidation, not more than a day, then a move higher. So we're kind of back in the same situation that we were last week. We last spoke last Monday. Um, as long as these moving averages stay fanned out, I mean, the 20 is trying to cross that 50. That's going to be another thorn or another another feather in the cap for the bulls, I should say, if that happens. Um, you know, just looking at uh, the volumes, not a big deal there. Looking at this moving average, I fully expect this moving average to hold if the bulls, in fact, want to take control. Again, if we zoom out just a little bit, we can see the perspective. This was the prior high. Let's draw our line here. And we'll go ahead and just draw that roughly. And we can see for the last uh, Thursday and Friday of last week, we pushed through it, but couldn't get the old close. We got a doji close on Thursday. We kissed it a little bit on Friday, but closed well below it again. So it's almost like the analogy I like to use of medieval time. You know, they're holding on to that battering ram log and uh, they're looking for a, a bunch of men to uh, gather some strength, get a couple of good nights sleep, a couple hot meals and pull that thing back and then try again. Like, my, I don't know what the hell I just drew, but um, the point being is you can't cut through these levels like butter a lot of times. You, you really need some consolidation to, to develop, take the potential energy and then turn that into kinetic energy to move higher. That's what the bull case is, is looking for. So the reason I had kind of said this, this could be a very interesting week um, is because you know, it seems like there's a lot of crazy stuff going out there in the news. I mean, uh, Iran's playing games and the market didn't really care stocks anyway oil certainly cared um if you want to get into the bigger picture that's a big significant breakout and fundamental people might start to say well you know that's not good for the economy maybe that's going to be kind of a little um feather in the cap for the bears and uh, so point being we're at a very significant inflection point up here what's going to happen are we going to fail and if we fail we're going to fail hard I mean, that much i can tell you that I can tell you from experience that if the sellers do show up with volume and force and a reason and a catalyst behind it, some sort of news event and everybody's in agreement, it's time to take profits, that's gonna be ugly. I'm not predicting that, I'm just saying if that happens, what I am predicting is that it will be ugly, it'll be fast and furious and volatile and there won't be any bids, hardly any bids to hit the first day. It'll be one of those stair step up, elevator down type days you always hear about. That's the worst case scenario. Uh, the best case scenario, again, is we just build up a little potential energy and then we can move higher. But the point being, again, for the second time is we are at a very serious crossroads here. We need to find out what's the market got. Is it gonna, is it gonna retreat or is it gonna fight? And uh, that's kind of where I feel that we are. Lastly, uh, when we look at the cues on the daily, same thing going on over there. There's our prior high, couldn't quite get to it. Resting on the, 10 day moving average, which I think is very important. We did come back and back and fill that area there. So we're doing a lot of good constructive work here in the NASDAQ. Maybe the NASDAQ is the one that's gonna consolidate and build up the most potential energy first and then push higher and drag everything else with it. Speaking of dragging everything else with it, you cannot stop this IWM. I mean, I get a little nervous when I see any bit of price action get this much distance away from their 10 period moving average. That means that you know, you're in, um, uh, profit-taking land for the short term. Parabolic moves like that don't last very long before the short-term day traders or the swing traders for a day or two take their profits. But this thing is very resilient. It's not pulling back. It's consolidating over time. If anything, it looks like it might even want to go higher. So very strong um, price action remains as it has for the last week in the Russell 2000. Uh, again, that could be a good sign. The underpinnings of big money managers rotating into small caps to try and keep this uh, this this rally alive. Kind of like those guys you used to see on TV in the 60s spinning plates on the stick. One plate starts to wobble and they run over there and spin that plate. Well, maybe that's what they're doing here with the Russell 2000 small caps and the IWM to keep this bigger picture going. So I just gave a lot of conflicting cases, some for the bears, some for the bulls. And that's where we are. We're at a very serious or interesting inflection point. And I think this week we might get some resolution. We'll see. But that's pretty much all I've got, Jamie. Good stuff, Steve. Thank you very much. I'll grab it back from you. Okay, and you should have eyes back on my desktop. Yep. Perfecto. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So as Steve was saying, you know, we, we've got some uh, interesting things going on. You know, over the weekend, uh, we had the, you know, bombing of the uh, Saudi oil fields and oil gapping up and all this talk about potential $100 per barrel oil. 
um, which certainly was unexpected. You know, uh, Andy and I were talking about, yeah, as long as there's no unforeseen macro events, you know, maybe we'll be pecking at that high next week. And of course, there you go. There's our big macro event coming out of nowhere, um, lighting the uh, Saudi oil fields on fire and that nice big gap up that we saw in the USO. Um, you know, by the way, you know, we're going to be looking at quite a few charts today, whether they're Holly or other plays, but man, talk about the chart of the day on the intraday. And here we are looking at five minute candles. I mean, look at that gap and look at that little range and that breakout. And it was just boom, 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 just up, up and away all day. Um, so as far as range breaks go, which everybody knows I like to talk about, I mean, doesn't really get any better than this. I mean, check out that first 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 45 minutes. We get a little lift there. Look at that tiny, tiny risk right there and then just up all day. Uh, a nice little 4.9, almost 5% move without a lot of pain in there. Um, just playing a simple range break. So definitely the chart of the day as far as intraday goes, in my opinion, on USO. Um, in addition to the oil fiasco that we have uh, going on, hey, we got the Fed going to be flapping their gums uh, this Wednesday as well. And then later on in the week, we've got quadruple witching uh, coming up on Friday. Uh, so between the oil, the Fed and quad witching, it's going to be an interesting week. Um, so, you know, take that for what you will. Um, take the money while it's there. You know, we're probably going to have more. Uh, of course, can't say for certain. But when we look at the SPY action that we had today, hey, we're at high, so let's go back down here, almost new lows. Oh, we're going to pop back up. No, nope, no, nope, we're going to go back down here and set new lows Then spending the rest of the day trying to get it back. Um, as far as difficulty goes, you know, when we have this type of action, the overall market, not your easiest trading day, so to speak. All right. And a lot of the charts that were looking good today all of a sudden became not so good. So <clears throat> you got to be nimble, got to be quick in this type of environment. So how did things play out today as far as the compare count windows and the ones I like to watch? What were they telling us today? And I was talking to the boys earlier this morning before the market opened. I'm like, okay, I'm only going to do these trades if the compare count is at this level. Okay. So on the big cap after the first, well, I actually took a reading after the first 10 minutes. It really didn't change that much in the, in the, in the next five minutes. This is pretty much what we saw pretty much uh, at 10 minutes and 15 minutes. So we barely squeaked above 55%, which is marginal at best to that side. Um, but once again, once we see what happened here, it didn't last too long. A lot of good positions that were working quickly were back to flat. You had to let things go from green to red if you wanted to sit those wiggles and hopefully get out at a higher price, which, you know, once we're the money, mm, I don't know about you guys, but it's hard to get, let it get back to red and then almost tempt to stop out. So difficult market conditions today, certainly. All right. But we did have a slight green bias here, 56%. Um, so when we take a look later on at the, let's see here, I lost my place on my cheat sheet. When we do look at, uh, take a look at the following the prior Holly signals, actually didn't hold up too badly today, up slightly, but in this market environment, that's saying something. Um, had a few longs pop out, one short. And NEO. And if we just kind of focus our attention over here, at one point in the day, these totals were a lot higher, but that didn't last. So if we just kind of eyeball this, about two points, all right, is what this tally's up to here. Uh, if we were trading 100 share lots, we'd be up close to 200 bucks there. Uh, if we tally all those up on a trade count of 22 trades, which isn't that bad. That's pretty low trade count, especially for a day like today. Um, 22 trades, not that bad, up two points on 22 trades, and we're up a little bit higher. And we'll look at those charts and we'll look at what the max profitability was and risk off and risk on as well. Uh, so a lot of sometimes we, you know, I'm going to be pointing out some things that we can't necessarily see uh, in the Holly metrics that are displayed here. So first off, let's do this. Let's take a look at what was available out there on the risk on, risk off side. Here I've got Holly's blotter. Let me just make sure I got, yep, real time. Um, and I've got this thing sorted by risk on here. 
if you guys hear me bail out for just a minute on the audio, it's because, well, it's allergy time here in Texas. And uh, if you hear me mute out for just a minute, I'm just saving you noise pollution of me coughing or sneezing or something like that. All right, so first on the list here, SEDG, as we can see here, risk off. She made a clean buck in it because the target was hit. Haven't seen a target hit in a while, but today, SEDG hit that target. We can see the entry line that uh, Holly produced right here, 77 and 62 cents. Not a bad entry. We had come up here, we'd come down to put in the bottom, uh, so as soon as we're coming off that bottom, uh, the breakout strategy identified SEDG. Well, what were, our, what were the odds going into that trade? Let's take a look at breakout here. Anything coming out of breakout, 60.9% odds starting the trade off. We can see that the strategy spit out two, only performed at 50% today, underperformed uh, to the tune of about 10.9%. But hey, in today's market uh, environment, not surprising. So SEDG, Holly plucks the one point in it because the target was hit, but check out what happened. You get the biggest part of the move following that target hit here. So if we're in the trade with Holly, off to the races, pretty much a pain-free trade, getting above that entry line from the get-go, staying above it for the duration. Um, so this is just one of the ones that should be relatively easy because, hey, we never had to sit any pain, never even got below the entry line here once we got above it. And Holly gets the imagination to go, you know what, this one's just motoring up. I like it. Either ignore Holly's exit signal and stay in it, accept full risk on, or do a little bit of the half and half, plug out a half with Holly, take that nice buck set a stop for break even or stick to your hard stop and you would have been handsomely rewarded here and we can see risk on percent closed if we stayed in it to the close 2.11 percent but check out max profitability all right from this level all the way up to the top here we had 3.9 percent of room in there from the time that holly made the signal call or the buy signal um, to the top here we're looking at 3.9 percent of potential which is pretty impressive on a day like today. So a great trade in SEDG coming out from Holly and a buck 63 showing officially as the spread. But, you know, looking over here, a lot more was on the table than what we can see here. Uh, not too much in the NTRA trade, even though it was a decent looking trade. And uh, max potential in that one was 3.8%. We can see holding into the close, we took a little bounce here, only ending up 2.2% is what Holly's reflecting as of the close here, but 3.8% max potential uh, in that NTRA trade. So not too shabby there. Let's see, from a percentage basis, this OPTN, and check it out, even finishing going into the close, one of the best performers in risk on, 4.29% heading into the close. Uh, and once again, let's see. What I really liked about this trade, a couple of different things here on the OPTN. As soon as we get the signal from Holly, we bump our heads up here on this candle and then we start a little consolidation phase. And we're looking at five minute candles today, ladies and gents. So not including the entry candle. What do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. About 45 minutes of nice consolidation action before we get a pop higher. Didn't really take off after that, but check out, you know, we're looking at the five minute uh, chart here. I'm just going to quickly flip over to the 15 minute because just like the five minute, uh, just like the five minute chart, look how well the 10 period is maintaining that move, right? So we get the entry signal here. Five minute charts a little crowded, but we did have the potential here. If we wanted to add to the position, we could have done so. So we're in the trade. We pop eyes. We go to sleep for a little bit. Gathers its steam. As Steve would say, it goes back and hits that door one more time and pops the new highs. And then we get a nice little uh, one more consolidation period before we finally head into the close. So right here, a nice spot to leverage the trade. You know, that's one of the things that's one of the harder concepts for a new trader and even a kind of a seasoned trader that hasn't been in the chair for eons. But maybe you're in the chair for a year or two. 
that's still one of the harder things to do is, is tack on more size, right? But when we simplify it like this and put it in perspective of nice tight range break after some consolidation, where we can add to the position here using the, the low of the prior 15 minute candle, um, in case we're wrong for that super low risk, you know, it would have paid off in this case. So leveraging a position that's already working, uh, that was brought to us initially by Holly, uh, textbook case here in OPTN. Now nine, we're gonna talk about this one because, well, reduce risk, once again, textbook. Not including the entry bar, what do we do? We just get a little sideways action here, slightly below the entry line. So when we're seeing these happen, you know, I can't repeat this enough. Yes, Holly can give us some good real-time signals, and sometimes we take those signals immediately because we like what's going on with the chart. But watching Holly, when she closes out a position using one of her audibles in the form of reduce risk or profit save is also a good thing to take a look at. This is the textbook example in nine. Get the signal here, what do we do? We just go below the entry line. So we're, we're red a little bit here going sideways, and you didn't even have to be in this trade. You just see the flash, and you look over, and you see Holly closing this out and reduce risk. You continue to watch. Well, here, here's where we would have gotten the signal. So you're thinking to yourself, okay, Holly made the buy signal up here. We're consolidating for 45 minutes here, right below the entry line. Hey, I can get a better price than Holly. You know, 714, 711, 710, somewhere in this area. I can get a better price than the AI. I like what's going on. Hug in the 10 period. Holly's notorious for doing this when she gets sideways action, especially if it's down slightly. All right, sometimes it's a flat, plus or minus a few pennies. Textbook case here. Could have gotten a better price than Holly on a strong looking play, strong looking chart, 10 period being adhered to. And then of course, could have gotten better price and then the trade ends up working and uh, could have been a really you know, good trade there. Based on watching Holly, Reduce risk closed trades and profit save closed trades sometimes can be really good entry signals. All right. So, you know, 34 cents in between here, since we have negative 10 and positive 24, 34 cents in there up for grabs um, versus a minus 10 from Holly. All right. A couple of questions popping in there. I see Steve is knocking them out, so no need for me to go and spin on those. Um, so, that's pretty much it for Holly today. Uh, in a market, like we had today, seeing Holly up two points on 20 some odd trade count, not too shabby. Can't really ask for much more because, you know, this market was not easy to navigate by any means. Um, so not the best, not the worst performance for Holly, but in the face of this market with everything that's going on, not too bad either. You know, Anthony was asking about compare count windows. I didn't know if we had any good literature on there. It looks like Scott dumped a link in there for him, but if there's anything you want to add, is there an ebook, a resource for how to use the compare counts for trading? Well, without spending too much time on that, Anthony, you know, I like to watch what's happening with the, the large cap stocks. And by large cap, I mean any company with a market cap in excess of $4 billion is what I like to keep tabs on. Uh, doing some accelerated volume in that 15, that opening 15 minute period, because sometimes it can give us an idea of where the market might be headed or, we could say it's what the institutions might be up to because they like to get large chunks of their orders done if they do have big buy and sell orders uh, in that first five, 10, 15 minute period uh, with the market on open, they can get big pieces done, but they can't get it all done. Um, so it's kind of like they leave some digital footprints in there um, and the higher the bias is, today it was marginal at 56% to the upside, but on some days, and it's usually maybe could be two, three, four times a month where we see a count in excess of 60, maybe even sometimes 70 percent. And on those days, it can really be beneficial to, you know, give us conviction and hold for the bigger moves. Now, that's just one of the ways we can use compare count windows. I'll briefly pull one up here before we move on to the next topic here. If I pull one up, you'll see you can configure these things for anything that you want to keep count of. Stocks hitting highs versus stocks hitting lows, that's kind of the base because the compare count windows were derived, the idea came from the tick, advancers versus decliners on the big board, right? But 
they're not applying any filtering, all right? It's just any stock hitting a high or a low, it develops a ratio. But that could be an obscure stock that prints a new penny high that you would never touch, right? So with the compare count window, we give you the ability to create simple or complex filter sets and keep count of only the things that you want to keep count of, whether that's bullish and bearish events on a single stock or the broader markets like what I do in the first 15 minutes to try to give me a bead on what the institutions might be up to there. Um, I would say Advanced 401, that topic is covered. So if you want me, you know, if you'd like more detailed uh, information on the compare count windows, then sign up for the 401 on Thursdays and uh, we can certainly uh, go into more detail there. Okay. So that was Holly real time live today. Um, now, as you all know, uh, following prior Holly signals for follow through, uh, which was a concept originally drummed up by Barry that runs the trading room. He had been having great success, not acting on plays as they come out in real time, but forming a watch list and watching what had been spawned yesterday or the day before, you know, uh, everybody's a little bit different. I like to follow the prior two days just because I don't like too many signals. Um, but, you know, you might want to watch three days, four days, five days. Um, so following prior Holly signals today, we did have some pretty good plays. And let's see, TPIC, Home, VNCE, and RVLV were all the long ones that were kicked out. So let's take a look at how those held up today, keeping in mind the environment that we had to work with today. Because, hey, everything was working great here, but boy, the conviction to hold, you know, and all that other uh, head trash that, that plagues us traders came into play today. But even with the downturn and the seesaw market that we had today, these things held up pretty well. They were up slightly. And in a market condition like this, to see that going on is something that's good when you're trying to implement a system and maintain it on the long term here. So having said that, these are the windows that I was using to monitor the Holly prior plays today. So real quick here, I'm just going to give you a peek into how many signals I was watching from Holly priors from Friday and Thursday. Only had my eyes on 14 to the long side and only four, hopefully everybody can see those numbers, four stocks to monitor on the short side, 14 to monitor on the long side. And don't bother hitting anything where I don't bother hitting any of these until at least 10 minutes into the market, okay? So here's the information stream today. These are all insignificant because they were happening before the 10 minute mark. You might be asking yourself, why the 10 minute mark? Well been watching this data for quite some time. Uh, I'll back test these once the uh, once the database updates today. But through my single day back test over and over again, going back weeks, that tells me the sweet spot. You start five minutes into the open, you run a greater risk of getting stopped out. You start 15 minutes later, that doesn't work either. It seems to be the sweet spot, can't really explain why, is the 10 minute mark. So that's why I wait 10 minutes to start taking these trades. So first one out of the shoot this morning was TPIC. Uh, I've, I went ahead and marked up the entry line right here, 1857 right here, stop loss down here, and where the stock maxed out up here. Uh, let's see, I marked these up in five minutes. So let me get back over there. Okay, tell me my notations didn't go away here, please. One minute. Home, RVLV. Okay, I see that one stayed. All right, well, I don't know why Tipic is not showing up with my notes. In any case, we can run a manual calculation here. All right, so TPIC, 1857. Before it rolled over, we got all the way up here to 1906. Let me just do this real quick because I had this data in there, but for some reason, when you switch time frames, your text annotation goes away here. So if we take 1906 minus our entry divided by our entry, 
Yeah, 2.6% from entry up here to the top. Now, you know, that was the potential, all right? Whether we got out up here or whether we took half off the table and set for break even, you can see that indeed that was the case today. And that's actually what I did on this. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and peel off half the profits. I'm gonna set the stop to break even. And you can see what happened here, stopped out, just like we see on some of the Holly trades. But nonetheless, the potential was great. 2.6%, nothing to sneeze at. So that was the first one out of the shoot today. And then we had home, which sad to say was a stop out. Okay, just pure and simple. Uh, this one got up a little bit, then it rolled over. So we're not gonna spend too much time on that. It was just a good old fashioned stop out. Come on charts, there we go. All right, and now we come to one that's a little bit different. Now, normally, if I was scanning through charts like this on a manual <clears throat> basis or manual ticker, I would look at this and I'd probably like, meh, nah, too spotty, too spotty. However, since I'm automating these secondary Holly, Holly automations, um, I didn't go through that process today. All I saw was this pop up and I look over at my blotter and I see that I'm long VNCE. And then I noticed a couple of different things about VNCE, which made me kind of like it, okay? Number one, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, check out our new super snazzy, much prettier single stock window, which is in the test version uh, that I'm debugging currently, but it'll soon be rolled out to you guys as well. Uh, just nice and pretty. We've also got a new tab over here, uh, which we can keep better buying and selling which is something that's been requested by our users. So we've added that as well. So this is our new deluxe single stock window. So one thing I liked as soon as I saw this, <clears throat> uh, not only, not only uh, the fact that it was, you know, cracking above yesterday's high, which is one of the factors of these windows. If you look at what I've got going on in here, other than the new high, these things have to be just above or at least hitting highs from the prior day, which lets us know, hey, there's continued action in these stocks because they're above yesterday's high. Uh, on the short side, they have to be below yesterday's low. So check this out, BNCE, in it, automated. Look at the float, 3.14 million shares. And as far as low floats go, that's pretty darn low. All right, usually, when we're talking about low float stocks, we're talking about stocks with a, a float uh, less than about 20 million. So this one was a really low floater. Um, and it took a little bit to get up here, but hey, it paid off in the end and delivered a return up here at the top of about four, a little over 4%, 4.1% to be exact. Um, so this one worked out quite nicely today. Next was RVLV. Uh, really nice looking entry signal here. Notice the little congestion area. And then notice we get the signal right as it cracks Friday's high, right here, all right? 26.09, got a little push, had to sit a little bit of pain there, but with a 2% stop, it wasn't any big deal. But this one just kind of ebbed and flowed along with the market all day. But finally, at the end, pretty much held this one till the last uh, second to the last five minute candle of the day. Uh, but this one kicked out 3% in this market as well. Um, so, you know, out of the four longs that were kicked out from Holly Priors, we had one stop out and three decent winners. And in a market like this, man, that's about as, that's about as much as you can hope for. And we weren't overloaded with signals. All right. We had 14 in the hopper, but only four met the criteria today, which were all displayed through this window right here. And it was just nice and easy, uh, you know, can't say stress-free, um, but, uh, you know, worked pretty well today. Uh, so it continues to perform. And then we only had one signal from the short side. You can see down here OXM triggered, but that's before the 10-minute mark was up. The only one that fired in the time frame after the first 10 minutes of the four was AVRO at a price of 1949 right here. This was our stop up here. We got a little frisky, but you know, not even maybe half the distance up there. 
uh, and before it rolled over. And this one just went down all day, took its bounces, but finished lower. Uh, definitely the shining star of the day was the AVR road to the short side, kicking out a nice 5.6% winner. Um, so out of both of these, five trades issued and one stop out, all right? Once again, in the face of this market with all the craziness, with the Fed coming up, with oil fields on fire and quadruple witching all in this week and a seesaw market today, not bad, not bad at all. So that's about it for the Holly Priors. Very pleased with those plays today. So, you know, hopefully some of you have been embracing this technique or at least starting to watch it. Um, and if you haven't done so, you might want to start. Keeping in mind, I like to go two days back, but everybody's a little bit different. Maybe try three, four, one, uh, experiment. All right, a couple of questions here. Uh, let's see, is there a list of the criteria that you mentioned which you need to hit in order to use the two-day Holly entries? Well, other than the setup itself, which is simply a new high or a new low above yesterday's high or below yesterday's new low, those are the, the triggers, so to speak. But to procure the list, pretty simple process here. I want to make sure we're not running out of time, all right, since we do have some time here. Um, so. For example, all of the uh, the things in the list today were uh, curated from Thursday's and Friday's list. So let's take a peek here. And you know, if we just go back to the calendar here, the 13th and the 12th, we right click on the all trades blotter, go to time frame, set the higher one up here, 13th, set the low date here as the 12th, then click OK. Now we're seeing all of the trades from Friday and Thursday, and this is the way I do it. I just sort by risk on, <clears throat> and I collect all the ones that finished either flat or up slightly. What do you know? The NCE, when it was triggered on the 13th, it didn't do anything. On the day that Holly triggered it, it was flat going into the close. Now it was up 35 cents at one point in time, but going into the close, <clears throat> it was right at flat. Just happened to be a very good performer today. So I just go down to the zero values and I stop there. And then I take, do one of these, highlight them all, hit control C. <clears throat> and in this case, I just pasted all these symbols into my Holly long list and then went and deleted out the shorts because there's very few of them. All right. Once I did that, then I just simply opened up my short list and manually added the shorts because there's very few of them, right? So, you know, whichever way you want to do that, whether you want to type them in manually or grab the whole list and then weed out the ones that are, you know, uh, the least, you know, obviously <laughs> we're not having shorts uh, rule the roost right now. Um, so that's the way I do it is I just throw all of them into the long side, go edit out the shorts and then manually input the shorts because there's typically a lot fewer of those. Once you do that, you're locked and loaded. Uh, you point your windows to those respective lists. Make sure you're pointed. So if I come in here to this window, you can see only the following list, Holly Longs, and just the opposite for the short side. Come in here. This window is only looking at the ho <clears throat> Holly Shorts. So Anthony uh, and Donovan, I hope that helps illuminate how you would get the symbols and how you would watch them for triggers based on these two windows here. And very simple configurations, new high has to be above yesterday's high, new low has to be below yesterday's low. Now I was, will go ahead and drop these into the chat window in case anybody wants to grab them and you don't have to rebuild them even though it is quite simple. So I'll just drop these into the chat area real quick here. There's Holly Longs and Holly Shorts. Okay, so that's how we do that. All right, we'll put this back on real time and shrink it back down. What else we got today? 
Okay, new paper trader, or excuse me, the new paper trading module is currently being tested. You've already seen the fancy new single stock window with the enhanced graphics and the insider uh, activity. But before you know it, you guys are gonna have access to this. And these are just some random trades that I plopped in here earlier in the day uh, so that we'd have something to look at here. Uh, but probably even after market, let's just see if an aftermarket trade even will execute here. Let's just go V, buy. Yeah, it'll even execute after market. Let's see, entry price of 145.58. Yeah, it's still marking just the closing price. I don't think that's taking into consideration um, aftermarket here. Let's take a peek. Yeah, well, could be 14.58. 1457 and we're up here at 146 so yeah this is only taking into account regular trading hours all right as far as the prices that it's marking here um, so once again why are we inventing paper trading well because if you want to paper trade with a broker dealer I'm sure those of you sitting out there in the audience that have jumped through those hoops it's kind of a pain, right? You got to get a demo account, you got to execute, maybe you have to pay for data. Uh, well, not the case anymore. Once we release this to uh, our users, you want to pay for trade from any trade ideas window, or you want to throw an automated strategy in there to see what it would be like, or manual trade, you're going to be able to do all of that stuff right here at Trade Ideas. Um, once again, making it easier for you to pay for trade. You don't have to open up a fake account at IB, pay for their data, all that good stuff. You can do it all right here. Since you're already paying for the data, you get to do it in real time data and you know forward test things uh, without having to jump through all the regulatory hoops as you would at a broker dealer. So slowly but surely, Trade Ideas is becoming an all-in-one stop for all things trading related, whether it's automated, uh, of your own uh, with Holly or your manual trades and who knows maybe somewhere down the pipeline getting into 2020 maybe we'll just go ahead and become a broker dealer we'll see what happens so once again hopefully a week or two and this will also be in the hands of the users and we've got just a little bit of time here um, so we already saw the uh, range break of the day it's gonna be hard pressed to find something prettier than what we saw in USO today kicking out 5%. But turbo up and turbo down, the original versions weren't that active today, but just as always, they managed to kick out a few decent patterns here. So I tell you what, we're gonna be looking at three longs here and a couple of shorts. Of course, they're gonna have some overlap here with the oil sector, right? Where did my single stock disappear to here? It's like hide and seek over here today. Okay, so Hess. And it was kind of a mixed bag today because some of the stocks were good to the upside. Some of them were uh, good to the downside. It just depends. Here we have Hess, which is a drilling oil and gas uh, company. And we had a nice signal right here. A nice clean range break. I mean, it's very obvious here. Nice break here, consolidation, and then just a sweet lift, all right? Not a bad trade, didn't have to sit any pain on this one. If this is the entry signal, as we crack that level right there, we just look back to prior 15 minutes, so we had a nice tight risk area right down here, and we got nice movement all day, so check out the, didn't have time to mark these up as far as percentages go, but hey, this is all you need to see right here. Here's our risk and here is our reward area. How many times could we fit that in there? Probably four or five times, all right? And that's what we always like to see. Low risk, high yield reward. This thing's kind of giving it back in the pre-market, but hey, in the in, in the regular, in the post-market, but man, plenty of time to get out for some type of profit here. <clears throat> Maybe even a nice opportunity to bolster the position here. And then once again here, this thing just marched up uh, like textbook today. All right, Continental Resources. Nice little 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 minute uh, consolidation area after the little run up there. Once again, a very beautiful chart, especially when we take a look at our risk area. Tiny, 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 
look at this reward area. And this is definitely what you want <clears throat> when it comes to risk versus reward. Now, just for clarification here, all of these are coming from turbo breaks up with market caps in excess of $4 billion. If you wanna try any of these windows out, all you have to do is come over here to the channel bar, come down here to channel four, and you'll see all of these windows that I'm pulling these plays from. Now, the last one, Home Builder, Toll Brothers. And the volume didn't kick in, we didn't get the alerts here and here. But sometimes, you know, sometimes we can still get a decent entry and accept minimal risk. We're looking at 39.79 here. We're looking at about a 16 cent risk here, okay? And of course, we're all guilty of chasing a little bit. Sometimes the key is not to chase too much. I felt compelled to put this one out because mm, it just ran so well the remainder of the day. <clears throat> we can see right here in this little kind of valley here, the volume was waning. But check out the overall relative volume. You know, when you see something like this and it's been behaving like this, sometimes, you know, hindsight's always 2020, but sometimes it does warrant an entry based on what we're seeing right here. And the five minute volume on this thing was pretty much pet the whole day. And once we got past this level right here, you saw the bigger part of the move occur. So once again, pretty low risk area, not quite as textbook as the other ones, <clears throat> but on a day like today, to get something that moves this much, man, I mean, you gotta pay a little bit of credence to it. Maybe you maybe you take a half lot here, since we didn't get it in just the most pristine uh, break level here. And that's always a good idea. If you feel like you're chasing a little bit because the volume is big and everything looks tight, maybe you just size down and do a half lot so you can minimize that risk if it does roll against you. Um, but man, Toll Brothers off to the races today. Um, finishing the day at almost five on the relative volume. And once again, keeping in mind the backdrop that we were up against today, a pretty impressive move uh, from Toll Brothers. We did have a couple of shorts on the list here. BP, what are they in? Okay, lots of different uh, things here. Oil and gas, definitely the keywords here. Um, as we can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about 35 minutes into the open. We break that low that was put in in the 10-minute the area right there, a little consolidation, and then boom, a nice release here, 5, 10, 15. And, you know, the theme of the day. In these some of these oil and gas stocks today, you could have extremely low risk <clears throat> and very juicy reward potential once again, as we're seeing here. A little bitty risk area. Nice big reward area in BP. And lastly, something completely different, GRA. Uh, what was this one? <laughs> Catalytic cracking, yeah, once again, fuels, fuel related, all right. So this one took a little bit more time to materialize, didn't get the big volume in this break right here, but we kind of went sideways here, uh, a lot more definable here, once again, King up this very low risk area later in the day and a decent move down. So some oil and gas stocks were going up, some were going down, but they seem to dominate the range break plays today. So USO was the king daddy, but between gray and some of these other ones that we looked at today, you could have had very low risk and very high reward uh, just watching for these nice tight range breaks today. And here we are at the top of the hour almost. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Scott, if you're ready to walk us out, let everybody know how they can save a little bit of cash on an upgrade or a new subscription, then we are ready to hear from you. And David, go ahead and throw your question up there and I'll just answer it via text. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Steve. Okay, so um, we have a summit of fast approaching and uh, there are still some tickets available. There's also the ability to save on them if you use that code on your screen. Uh, if you can attend San Diego in person, that is a great networking opportunity, and we have a ton of great speakers already lined up. So trade-ideas.com slash summit is the page to go to to check all that out, see who's uh, already on the docket for the uh, speakers. And there's also a link there to save on hotel rooms too.
Uh, if you can't make it to San Diego and want to view it online, you can go to trade-ideas.com slash live stream, put in your email address, and you'll get an update as soon as we have all the links and information for how to watch it live. I uh, really recommend you do one of those two things. If you're anywhere near San Diego or you want to make it down here, go for the ticket, come in person. A lot of people had a great time. Uh, we have an ebook series that's new. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go ahead and get these, uh, great companion to the uh, post BTFD world ebook that we launched a while ago. Just go to trade-ideas.com slash setup. There's three books. Each one has two chapters. They also include cloud links to some strategies. They're arranged by subject. So uh, go grab them. Uh, we've got a podcast. You just subscribe by searching for Trade Ideas Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and get the newest one. Browse the archives. Check that stuff out. If you subscribe, you're ready for the next one already. Uh, we have a code Good for upgrades or new subscriptions or brokerage plus licenses. Search for, I'm sorry, excuse me, just use summer end, all caps, as it is on the screen. And uh, the email reminder you'll get tomorrow will also include it. Uh, just use that. Save 15% off your first month of year of trade ideas, brokerage plus, or an upgrade. Take advantage of that before the end of September. Uh, any questions, email us, info at trade-ideas.com. That goes into our help desk, and that uh, is the best way to get fast support. Uh, you can follow Jamie on Twitter at CompBot. Uh, Steve Gomez is at Today, Today Trader. We've also got at Trade Ideas and Face and uh, Trade Ideas Pro on Facebook is the handle to follow on Facebook and share stuff with your friends. Uh, we're going to have the recording up later on tonight or tomorrow, and you get an email reminder from Go to Webinar tomorrow with a link to the playlist where you can find it. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, Steve. Thanks all. Have a good one. Hey, thanks everybody. Thanks for attending. We will see you tomorrow. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. Yep.